This year, a new course called Art and Biomolecular Recognition Lab was added to Yale's Blue Book. There, students learn to develop biochemical ways to preserve and restore art. It aimed to unite science and art in one classroom, but in the process, it inspired much more. Lily Rifkin and Kristen Mendes bring us the story of one student whose passion for science and art continued far beyond the lab's walls. Lillian She looks like any other pre-med engrossed in an experiment. What you might not expect is that she's an econ major, studying the biochemical pathways of art. She, like many of the students in this lab, are not science majors. Last semester, Lillian was part of a new lab course called Biochemistry and Art. Fifty applied and only twelve were admitted. And any student could take it, um, but it would be aimed at students who weren't necessarily studying science. Um, and they would have their own projects and it would bridge art conservation and molecular biophysics. During the semester, they learned how to biochemically recognize color and studied the highly valued Le Pee Blue on the Virgin's robe. And Yale is kind of known for these cool like interdis interdisciplinary classes where you like meld, I don't know, like your love of history for like your love of your passion for like photography or something, you know, weird classes that really for students to think. A lot of the students were art, you know, art history majors and some were chemistry majors. Some of them came from all different backgrounds, so they hadn't ever really thought about our objects um, any deeper than the sort of iconography that was on the surface of the object. Like we were like an eclectic mix of people. I was an econ major, there was like a comp sci major, someone was majoring in psychology. Of course there were a few science majors as well, but I think what really held us together was our like love for art. The class not only explores the science behind art preservation, but also how and why it affects the piece's artistic value. So, you know, for example, um, what kind of material that's been used in a painting may have some sort of relevance to the scholarship of that painting. So it may have something to do with authentication, if you're wondering whether a painting is from a specific era or by a specific artist, learning more about the actual chemical makeup of the painting can actually reveal quite a bit. Within the course, each student pursues his or her own preservation project. For example, one student used lead soap to determine how an oil painting should be stored and restored. For Lillian Shi, her project inspired her to pursue preservation beyond the classroom. So for instance, one project was a, a bowl like this, it was Ming Dynasty pottery. This may not be from the Ming Dynasty, we can't authenticate it, but it's certainly a blue-white glaze. And so this student asked the question of whether she could develop a tool, a molecular tool that could recognize and date the blue glaze of pots like this. And what I was trying to do was uh, to determine the provenance via molecular target and phage display um, of these pieces so that um, eventually our conservators and maybe auction house um, people can use this. Just two weeks ago, her research earned the prestigious Frank E. Fellowship for the Advancement of Humanities in the Sciences. It will fund her continued research that she hopes to publish in the fall. So, I'm the only one currently doing independent research, but hopefully that will change. <laughs> From YTV, this has been Kristen Mendez and Lily Rifkin. The course will be offered for a second time this fall and it is cross-listed with MB&B and History of Art.